Hello YouTube, this is a YouTube exclusive for you on Red Prison. Now, we've gotten about 50 matches into leagues off stream for most of those, but a few on stream and a few for YouTube videos. At this point, we're starting to see what are people deciding to play, and quite honestly, it's just about everything. So how do you tackle a wide open meta? That's difficult to say. However, we have a few ideas and a few things we've observed, along with going to back to a few theories that we had way back when, when we decided 21-9 was the right split. 21 lands, 9 rituals. With that, let's get into the deck tech, let's talk about a few things, and a few observations we've seen. So many people are starting to already count out Red Prison, and I think that is false. After all, we've already had some decent results with Red Prison, and it's barely been a week. Rest in peace, Spirit Guide. Getting it done with the post. Simeon Spirit Guide ban. That being said, one thing we're observing, though, is there's a lot of diversity in the meta. That's great. Actually, that's pretty healthy for Magic It on the whole. In some cases, you could argue as long as Red Prison is considered an underdog, then the meta is pretty healthy. But this also does allow us to begin to widen what we're attacking and try to bring in some new things to give our deck some diversity. And so that's what we're going to do. Now in playing some of those matches, and we may even go ahead and upload the entire league with the Phoenix in it. Phoenix? I can't believe it's working. Look at this feather token. We have a few options to us that we're going to explore. Now let's talk a little bit about that theory first, and then we'll get into that addition, and we'll get right into the leaks right after. So theory-wise, we have bumped to 22 lands. You're probably observing me putting these extra lands in, a few utility things. For example, Valakut Awakening is one of these that we're bringing in right now, which gives us some utility in one of these modal dual facing cards. We are bumping to 22 lands because the probability of finding three lands by turn three is approximately 90%. This is great. We're pretty happy to have that. Now, you might be asking, well, big deal. You've got things like Chandra, Karn, and I do see Koth and Pia Kirin Alar. Don't get too excited. But we have a lot of four drops. Well, we actually are okay to do this. And the reason we're okay to do this is because the Desperate Rituals and Pyretic Rituals. Now, my initial gut feeling was to just chop the simian spirit guides and add pyretic rituals here however that's not seeming to be the right play so we must evolve after all you don't just simply swap something out and suddenly get the same results in fact the most common question online is what replaces this card for either a budget reason or a ban reason and almost always it's followed by well, there's not exactly a replacement, but you could do this. And that's kind of where we're at with Red Prism. In fact, it's probably just better to not try to replace it. In fact, try to evolve. And that's what we're going to do here. What we've done here is looked at Channel Fireball's land distribution, probability of hitting lands done article. And we feel like six is actually closer to hitting the 90% to hit basically a four drop but keeping in mind that when we hit that four drop, we may not hit that four drop again for the next one or two turns. But that's okay because Red Prison is essentially an accelerating deck that tries to get something ahead of the curve. That being said, we're not like a red-green Ponza list that tries to get ahead of the curve and stay ahead. We just want something ahead that gives us that advantage. Now, we're seeing a lot of mid-range out there, so what does that mean for the list? Well, that means we need to have a lot of ways to interact with mid-range, but also a lot of ways to have mid-range struggle against us. Mid-range is typically one-for-one one removal or one-for-one one cards. Things like perhaps Liliana to make us edict away a creature, fatal pushes, lightning bolts, paths, so on and so forth. So what are we going to do about that? Well, in our experiments with playing online, and with a little help from the community, iSqueak gave us a Phoenix to talk about. And you'll also notice that I have Pia Kiranalar and Koth here. Now we're going to be cutting Koth. Sorry. I know some of you are excited about that. Thankfully, I won't have it probably in the thumbnail. So Koth is gone. But I also have this inclination that I should cut a Chandra. And this is kind of a question mark for me because I think Chandra would work well with destroying our opponents from behind a bridge. 
but I think Harn's been doing just enough of that. So, one Chandra, we'll see how it runs, and we'll cut. The benefit to doing this is if we accelerate into a 4-drop, we have less things that are targeted by force and negation. So what's the replacement? Well, it shouldn't be any surprise because it's sitting there below me as an image, but we're going to go ahead and bring in Everquill Phoenix. Everquill Phoenix is a mutate card that I've actually enjoyed quite a bit here. And with this Everquill Phoenix, let's see what we can do. Now it mutates and gives a creature perhaps flying or anything else, but the big thing here, and to that note about mid-range, the reason the P.A. Kieran Alar and things like Season Pyromancer and Goblin Rabble Master are good at creating tokens, Everquill can actually give you an option to get the creature back. Keeping in mind, though, that it must mutate and it must complete mutation. What I mean by that is if you mutate onto a creature and your opponent removes it, you're out of luck. That being said, though, we've had plenty of times where we've gotten to see this, and I want to see if we can make it work. Also, what's really nice is if you ditch a future Phoenix to Season Pyromancer, you could get it back with the token. This is going to be Red Prison. We're adjusting it for a mid-range meta. We'll see if we run into that. A few sideboard changes here, nothing too noteworthy. But we'll see if we run into anything that warrants our decisions. We'll see you in the leagues. Let's see how it goes. Here we are. Let's go ahead and play some magic here. I'm gonna see if this Phoenix has any weight here. We also have from the sideboard Hazard and Stormbreath Dragon, and if we end up running into some of those matchups, we'll see if those are beneficial cards to be bringing in. Stormbreath for the blue-white control, and Hazard for Jund. Let's go ahead and find our opponent. Let's get to match number one here, and let's play some magic. And we found our opponent. Took a bit of time, but hey, the wait is worth it. Let's play some magic. Let's lock them out. MT score 94 our opponent. We have a double chalice here, two season pyromancers and a ritual. This seems fine to me. Let's go ahead and see what our opponent's up to. Arid Mesa here. Okay. Snow Cover Mountain and a Swift Spear. This could be burn. This could be burn. We end up top decking another land. Let's go ahead and get this chalice on one, perhaps chalice on two, and then season pyromancer to defend us. It's starting to really look like burn now. Monastery Swift Spear coming in for another point of damage. Spiring Vantage plus Snow Covered Mountain, and they play an Eidolon. All right, things are looking a little bit sketchy here for us. We'll go ahead and put the Chalice on one, take a little bit of damage here. We might have to play Season Pyromancer next, but we could be playing Chalice on two. Just taking a little bit more. My opponent takes damage to get a Prowess Trigger. Okay. And Helix us. Another Prowess Trigger and then hits us for 5 after the 3. Puts us to 8. This would put us to 6. Putting us to 6 is dangerous here. Puts us to 6. 5. Four, three, plus prowess triggers two. I guess I'm going to have to do the Season Pyromancer instead, getting rid of probably Desperate Ritual plus Bridge here. We find another Chalice. These Chalices are just a touch too late, but maybe with the defended creatures here and only maybe one spell getting through, I can put a Chalice on two. They attack with just the Swift Spear. We'll go ahead and just jump block. Okay, maybe the Chalice on one's gonna protect us. This is a closer game than we like. Let's go ahead and throw a Chalice on two now. Oh, we have a Skull Crack. We're going to three. Skewer, Rift Bolt, all of these things scare me a little bit here. No attack, obviously. Looks like I might be having to go to one here after playing another season Pyromancer. They may not attack with this Eidolon ever again. Just hope to hit lands, use these season Pyromancers for tokens till I can find a Chandra. I don't know. <laughs> this is close. 
Surely my opponent has like a Rift Bolt or something. Combat away they go. They do not attack us. Interesting. There's a land drop. I'm going to play my land. I'm actually going to go ahead and play Season Pyromancer going to one. We might just have to play a Chalice on three here and then hope for the best. <laughs> hope for the best. No attacks, obviously. We have enough lands to bring back some of the Season Pyromancers, so that's good. Oh my gosh. Well, I guess we'll put a Chalice on three here. And we'll see if my opponent can eventually get through our wall of tokens. Not how I expected to be locking my opponent out. Need to be careful not to cast anything into this Eidolon. And my opponent concedes. <laughs> well then. Oh, oh, the Phoenix was going to show up. Oh, play the Phoenix on the Elemental and start smacking them. Oh, we had the win condition. All right. So Anger comes in. Maybe a Kozlik's return. Hazard seems okay. Let's go ahead and take out some bridges here. Um, I think Batter Skull is okay to find off of Karn. I expect my opponent to have something like Smash to Smithereens or a Braids or things like that. No Trinospheres. I think this is just how we're going to have to do it. We, we snuck by with the Chalice. We snuck by. Who needs to play Chalice on turn one on one? Not this guy. Let's go. Bridges are out because you don't want those in against Brid, uh, Burn. Let's see here. Um, all right, I'm going to keep this. I'm actually going to get rid of a Rabble Master here. Blood Moon's pretty good against some of the Boros Helix Charms and maybe Oriok Champions my opponent could be playing. And Season Pyromancer did well last time. Let's not forget that. Karn can help us go get also a nice juicy batter skull, which would be super nice to have. Scalding Tarn here, Sacred Foundry. Really hoping that it's not like an Oriok champion here. But we have the Karn to go get a walking ballista. Alright, it's a core firewalker. It's kind of the same thing. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and put a Blood Moon down. I don't care about them gaining life necessarily right now. We just need a way to prevent my opponent from killing us. So Blood Moon down. No more white cards, which is good for us. Plays a Swiss Spear. They're going to be gaining life. So we need to find a way to kind of lock this opponent out or eventually get to a Walking Ballista with Karn. There's an Eidolon follow-up here as well. Tax for three. A land drop would have been nice. Let's go ahead and play a Season Pyromancer to see if I can get a different land than this Gemstone Caverns. Let's yield to Eidolon. We'll get rid of Rabble Master plus Blood Moon here. We do. We hit a Phoenix as well. Okay. So we can Karn, Downtick, Batter Skull. We could Karn Town Tick and get a Walking Ballista, which would guarantee I get rid of Core Firewalker. There's a Searing Blaze. We yield to this one as well now. They do Searing Blaze the Pyromancer, which could allow me to get it back in the future. Well, we'll chump block once here. That seems okay to do. Got two four drops, which is nice for us. They follow this up with another Eidolon. Okay, this is kind of interesting. From here, they have one card remaining. We can play Phoenix as a blocker, which is a decent blocker, or we could do Karn down tick for Batter Skull. I sort of like the idea of Phoenix here, honestly. Phoenix mutate on the elemental. The thing is that this core firewalker is going to be here. If we do Karn down tick, my opponent can attack us for two, four, six damage. It's a lot. Let's 
Let's go ahead and mutate with the elemental. They gain a little bit here, but we get a nice big blocker. Um, you can put this over because we want the 4-4. We get a feather token, which is nice. We get to see the feather token here. I think this is a sweet card. Play is obviously next to probably do Karn here. We're hoping they're drawing things like Boris Charm and Helixes, maybe future core Firewalkers. Doesn't appear that way. They may have a Searing Blaze. Another Eidolon. Oh my gosh. Maybe it would have been better to get the Batter Skull. All right, so they're empty-handed here. They attack with everything. I think I'm going to block the Swift Spear, take six. If I do this, if they play anything, they take so much damage. If I take six here, I can't really defend enough unless I play like Season Pyromancer's tokens here. If I draw a Slag Storm, I'm going to want to blow up the world. But this would kill me anyway, because I would block here two, four, five, go to five, take four. Maybe our only line is really actually to block an Eidolon here and then plan Season Pyromancer and see where we can go from there. Because this is one, two, three, four, five, six. I have to probably do this. Hope they don't draw a bolt or something. A lot of Eidolons here. I don't think we have a good way of getting out of this. Goblin Guide. I can now block, 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 and I take three. Hmm. Top of the libraries is Season Pyromancer. Unfortunately, I can't get rid of all the Eidolons here. I'm still going to take two. Hmm. Oh, it wasn't a Season. It was in a Braid. Uh, still. Play Karn, one, two, three, four, and I have three left over. I don't have enough. All right, go to game number three here against Burn. Needed, needed a chalice or something. We needed to stop the core Firewalker. Okay, let's. That core Firewalker is going to be so hard to deal with. We have a Batter Skull and a Walking Ballista. I can't imagine it's right to bring in the Batter Skull. We're going to be on the play as well. That's an important distinction between the last game and this game. I think we just submit it back. My opponent had a good draw, a lot of Eidolons there. If they didn't have so many Eidolons, wouldn't take so much damage. Okay. Um. I don't think I like this hand. We've got two Pain Lands. I've got creatures that are going to get Searing Blazed. We could get a Blood Moon on turn two. Maybe that's an okay thing to keep. Keep that and then play the Season Pyromancer and we pre prevent a core Firewalker, which was a problem. All right, we'll keep. I don't know about this. Start with this Rami not Ruins. The Blood Moon's going to make it so that the Ruins don't hurt us, and this is sort of the reason to go ahead and keep this. I could also top deck a Basic here. That would make it so I don't take any damage. Blood Moon stopping the Helixes, the Core Firewalkers, things like that is probably worth it, considering how painful it was in Game 2. Top of the library is a Chalice of the Void. Now I have the choice between Chalice of the Void or a Blood Moon here. I think the Blood Moon still has to come down here. Even though I now take even potentially more damage for a few turns. 
but stopping the core fi core firewalker oriok champion just having to take some of these one drops it's just gonna have to be what it is rift bolt suspended here my opponent taxes for three we end up going into a Coslix return, but unfortunately don't have the next land, unfortunately. So Chalice on one it is, pass the turn. My opponent's best case here is Rift Bolt us, smash this, smash with the, the face, and we don't top deck our land here. So there's a land. Two mana. Skullcrack is close to a smash. Down to eight. Plus five, we do top deck the mountain. Okay. I don't particularly want to expose myself to a Searing Blaze. Let's go ahead and Kha'Zix return right now and pass. I can Karn. I'm almost hoping to hit a few lands here. I need them to avoid being able to kill my creatures. There's a few lands. Let's go ahead and Ritual to play Karn. We'll go down. We have to pick up Batter Skull here. The problem is Batter Skull doesn't attack for a turn. So my opponent could find plenty of ways to kill us here. Land plus Searing Blaze would kill us when we play Batter Skull. Just gotta hope. Land? Ritual. All right. Let's go ahead and go down one more time here. This could be... Let's get a Walking Blista. And, um... Good luck us. If our batter skull gets to connect here, we'll be good. No land searing blaze, no smash, no skull crack, no double. There's a land. Ah, uh, sad day, sad day. Take the three here. Very close game. This batter skull getting to hit once here probably fixes the game for us and we're able to take over. Opponent has the Syrian Blaze, takes us down. That's Burn versus Red Prison. Close one here. Didn't quite get it though. We'll see you in match number two. Let's turn this league around. Let's get that 4 1. Match number two. Queued up here. Let's find this opponent. Let's play some magic. That was a very close burn match. Came down to really, they just had the land plus the Searing Blaze. Probably when we used the Karn to go get the Batter Skull, they held the land. I actually don't see them playing a land with how many they had in play either. All right. Behind us, though. 0-1, going into match number two. Playing some Everquell Phoenixes here in Modern. Seeing if we can use these to our advantage against perhaps a mid-range based meta. And we get to play first. I like it. All right. We'll keep this. We have enough lands here. We have the Phoenixes. We have the Rabble Masters. This is what we want. This is what we want. Turn two Rabble Master. Turn three Rabble Master. Or Phoenix a token. Smash him, smash him, smash him. Let's go. Opponents mulligan to six, five, four, and three. That's not good. This may be a non game. I wonder what they're looking for. Maybe they're Tron. Maybe they're Tron. You can see here. They keep three. All right. Good luck, opponent. Player tap land first here because we're planning to curve out to Rabble Master plus Rabble Master. Eldrazi Tron. Expedition map. I think we'll be fast enough here. I think we will be fast enough. Play our land here, ritual out the Rabble Master and Smash Face. All, all the Rabble Masters. We're gonna ignore this season Pyromancer, go Rabble Master and then Everquill Phoenix if we hit the lands. In for one.
one damage. This would be a mid-range matchup. We'll see if we can kill it. I would argue it's a bit more of an aggressive mid-range list, but it's definitely not in the, the realm of aggro, which was what we just played against Burn. If you start seeing aggro, less phoenixes, more angers and slag storms, or abrades or bone crushers. Urza's Tower here, Eldrazi Temple. We have a Mind Stone. Opponent is ramping, but it may be too little too late. Turn comes back to us. We have this Rabble Master. Pretty much going to play that. Would love to see a land here to work our way up to the Phoenix. Another Season Pyromancer. I'm just going to slam the Rabble Master if we end up missing the land. Season Pyromancer is just a completely fine thing to be playing next turn. And I want to be able to attack with two Rabble Masters this coming turn. Let's go ahead and attack. Big, big creatures here. Rabble Master will also trade nicely with a Reality Smasher or a Thought Not Seer, or whichever one my opponent's planning to play here. Down to 11. Go ahead, opponent. I don't see them coming back from this. At most, they will have four mana with a land drop. They'll have five if it's an Eldrazi Temple. We weren't going to find the land, play the Season Pyromancer, getting rid of Chandra, and Season Pyromancer hitting Slagstorms and Ruins. We had it. We had it. Okay. This is a Magus and a Damping Sphere along with Matrix matchup, and I think I want this Hazret. We can get rid of a few Slagstorms here and the Chalices. This gives us six options here. I kind of want to just go ahead and play the Storm Breath Dragon and maybe leave one Slag Storm. We could also bring Spyglass in, but we might want to fetch that with Karn. We do want Bridge in this matchup. They tend to want to smash you with Reality Smashers and Thought Not Seers. I think keeping one Slag Storm is probably okay. Let's go ahead and do that. Gives us a touch of reach and also gets rid of some of the smaller Eldrazi's we might run into. All right, um, no Blood Moon, that's for sure. Now that we know what we're playing against, I kind of want to throw this one back because we have our five drop and two four drops. It's a lot of mana to get up to, and we only have two instead of curving naturally to three. Let's mulligan looking for a faster moon. This hand looks almost similar. However, I do like it a little bit better with the Season Pyromancer as the first play and ditching a Storm Breath Dragon. Let's go ahead and keep this one. And, um... Well, we were going to play land. Storm Breath wouldn't be in hand. Our first draw would be a Season Pyromancer. Our next draws were going to be Bridges. That was probably going to be enough. And we were going to find a Blood Moon. If my opponent's mulliganing down here and just not able to interact with a few of our quicker things, definitely going to probably be a problem. We're only going to hit three lands, though. A reason to be careful about your four drops in this list. But there you go. We're one and one. We're on the right track. Let's see if we can get that 4-1. We'll see you in match three. Match three is queued up here. Let's go ahead and play some magic. One and one, taking down our Eldrazi Drawn player. What's interesting to me is the concession so early, but also what's interesting is that Eldrazi Tron is an unfavored matchup for Red Prison because they usually have things like Ratchet Bomb, All is Dust. They'll have other ways to interact with our bridge like Karn, the great creator, and then being able to remove it with something like a Spatial Contortion or other removals, say Dismember. So it's actually really difficult to beat Eldrazi Tron nowadays. Just keep that in mind. They have plenty of ways to get that colorless mana through Mind Stones, finding wastes off Expedition maps, and so on and so forth. Now, they have taken a hit as well, because sometimes they would play Simeon Spirit Guide, so maybe we're not as unfavored as we used to be. Well, enough about that. It was a quick one. Let's find this next opponent. Match three.
and this opponent has been found. Let's go. One and one, going into match number three. Let's play first. Um, all right. For a little bit of science here, let's go ahead and keep this. We have a board wipe for red, and we have Valakut Awakening. If these two cards are no good, we'll use Valakut Awakening to redraw a hand, and we'll see if this utility land is worthwhile. Flooded Strand for my opponent. No indication of what they are exactly just yet. Let's go ahead and, with this ritual, get at least Blood Moon out there and let them pick white or blue. And hopefully no counter spell here. Snow-covered island has been chosen, blue being floated and an opt being used. I have a feeling I'm gonna wanna use this Valakut Awakening now to get rid of the lands and the Slagstorm here, trying to find ways to beat down my opponent quickly. Or I can wait for Karn. Let's wait for Karn. <laughs> Chose differently. Oh. 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 Well, maybe I'll just Slagstorm that, you know? Maybe maybe this is their, their plan to do the beatdown. Oh, oh, yes, I want to... Well, I could Karn. You know what? Let's just try to Karn here to get rid of that slag or the sword. I'm gonna go up here with Karn initially, so I avoid a bolt. My opponent could be a bolt list. Now they can't attach this. I've got Slag Storm here. Who knows what we're gonna go get, maybe. I could see them attacking Karn, and they do. New Karn. Um, maybe I just slam a batter skull. I don't know. Maybe I get a walking bliss and just pick this off. That kind of seems like a good idea. I don't think I need to get a liquid metal coating just yet. Let's go ahead and play this and go ahead and avoid, for example, a mana leak here. If they counter this, I could then slag storm this away as well. Now I feel pretty good with how I've played this, and this gave me more information. We'll deal three damage to each creature, wipe them away. I do get a zero zero walking ballista, which isn't great, but hey. Now we know we probably want Bridge. We know a little bit more about them with the Spell Queller. Feeling pretty confident about what we've got going on. Let's go ahead and play a Chandra. Let's go ahead and go up, but not on the sword here. And let's go ahead and put down a Rabble Master. That seems decent, right? Rabble Master, past turn here, attacking for one. This is all coming together. Now, this is more on the control side of mid-range, but it is a mid-range style list. Pretty happy to see what's going on here. Feeling confident we'll be able to deal with everything they're throwing at us. Especially now that I can get a liquid Metal Coating and play the Karn into play. My opponent paths us, trying to just save themselves a little bit here. Let's go get that liquid Metal Coating. Let's see if we can play this down. Yeah, my opponent's just not interested. We can liquid metal coating the island to shut off something like a mana leak and then follow this up with a Karn using Chandra if we wanted to, just to save a little bit more mana and then use Karn uptick on the snow covered island to get rid of it. Things came together nicely there. I'm happy. All right, so I kind of want Storm Breath. I kind of want Hazard here. Ah, uh, might not want the might want the anger. I think I want one torp orb here. Let's get rid of chalices. I kind of want this damping matrix as well. Damping matrix might be just better than one everquill phoenix because they do have pass celestial purge in there in the white category. Kind of swapping in the storm breath for the everquill seems like the right play. I know Hazard can get path. We're just gonna have to accept that some things do. So let's make our creatures that they do path really powerful. And then yes, chalice on one might be a thing, but I'm gonna start taking chalice on one out when it's kind of medium. We would normally keep this in. I wanna stop opt, I wanna stop path, but I kind of wanna take it out now because it's not happening so quickly. 
Keep in mind, we are on the draw. We could gemstone it out. I'm just going to go, let's take it out and start experimenting and seeing. Damping Matrix here for things like Stoneforge Mystic and also for their uh, artifact package. Two lander here, two four drops and a bridge. The bridge is probably the weaker card here. I'm gonna mulligan this. I wanna be a little more aggressive. Uh, this hand's kind of interesting. Try to get something out very quickly. My opponent's mulligan to five now, which was interesting. Let's keep. Let's get rid of a Karn here and see if on turn three we can play Karn or Chandra. Preference is probably Chandra. We're doing this because my opponent's mulligan to five, taking that into a bit of consideration. And I think that's something we want to consider is, yes, we can accelerate something, but what are we accelerating? Is it a lock piece or an aggressive piece? It's aggressive. My opponent's probably trying to avoid us getting them with a Blood Moon. We top deck a Blood Moon, which happens to just kind of null and void everything I was kind of suggesting. But here we go. Let's play some magic. Let's see what happens here. We got a couple fetch lands here. Looks like they want to do something here on turn two. This is going to be basic, basic, probably. Basic, basic. Maybe we play Blood Moon. Maybe we don't. Stoneforge Mystic. Go get something that's sort of Feast and Famine. Another land for us. Well, let's go ahead and play the Blood Moon. Keeps them off of double colors. Maybe Skyclave Apparition is something we want to avoid. Extra Island here. Starting to see what Blood Moon's not capable of. Play our land past the turn. They'll bring Sword in. Now this is protection from green and from black. We could keep Chandra here to kill the Stoneforge here. We could also do something else. I think I ditched this Phoenix here. I want to try Karn or Chandra. I know these can get Spell Quell, but so can the Phoenix. I think these are one of our better options here. And we'll lead with Chandra here. I'm expecting Spell Queller. Aether Gusts. All right, let's bottom. I'd expect a Spell Queller there, and the idea is we're going to tuck that under rather than Karn so that if we can kill the Spell Queller, things would be really nice for us. My opponent bounces a Blood Moon here. They attack us. I'm going to get rid of this Blood Moon. It's not doing anything anymore for us. They have a bunch of nice basics. Let's go ahead and play Karn. See if this gets us anywhere. The answer is no. Cryptic Command. We'll pass the turn. We'll keep our Valakut Awakening in hand right now. We are but like a turn away from something like a Storm Breath taking over this game. Although with them attacking here, it's starting to look less and less likely. We'll get rid of the Valakut Awakening because we're losing lands and cards to pitch to this. Top deck's in a Braid. We'll attempt to destroy the artifact here. I expect a counter. No counter. All right. So we're in a good spot here. Don't know what they have that they didn't want to counter in a braid. Maybe it's just a bunch of lands for them. Misty Rainforest, another island here. Plenty of basics. Teferi goes up here. We have a Hallowed Fountain. We have two unknown cards that are probably not very valuable. We're looking for Hazard Storm Breath here. And we hit neither of them. Play a Blood Moon here and pass the turn. They might use the draw with the Javari. I could see them going up one more turn, though. Down to nine. Okay. Top deck a Phoenix. We'll play this. They can obviously bounce this with Teferi, but trying to get them to do something here. To me, I would have this just land on the battlefield. It doesn't have haste. They're probably reading the card and realizing that right now. Now they can just bounce it with Teferi or path it. That's that's fine too. I I like that path. I'll take that every day. <laughs> There's an opt. So we have a random card here. They put the card on the top. Snapcaster into opt. 
A lot of drawing going on here. We're not dead just yet. We're close though. They put another card on top. They'll use Teferi to bounce Blood Moon and draw another card. Very tempo based list here. Blood Moon's bounced. Three cards for my opponent. Attacks for three. Down to six. Storm Breath? No. All right. We're going to concede here. We're not getting anything that's going to get rid of these cards. Bridge just gets bounced by Teferi in a few turns. Probably not getting there. All right. Let's go to the final game. Let's... You know what? Let's bring Everquill and return in for a pair of Blood Moons. Let's bring a Magus in for a Blood Moon. And let's just play... Let's, let's bring in a Chalice for a Blood Moon. Let's play Blood Moon Liss. And let's take a Bridge. No, Britain. I kind of want to get this other Chalice in here. Yeah, let's go for this. We'll have the one random Chalice. We can put it on one if we want to. We're on the play. Let's play first. Okay. We can keep this. No acceleration, but we don't always get that. We do have Season Pyromancers, which are difficult for my opponent to deal with. We got a nice Rabble Master as well. Snub Cover Planes. That Blood Moon's looking worse and worse every time. <laughs> we'll see if we play the Stampy Matrix or not. First card I wouldn't mind playing here is Rabble Master. I expect it to get countered. Let's go Rabble Master. <laughs> Counter, Path, any of these. Path is okay here. Prefer this to be Path than anything else. This also gives us the ability to play now Chandra or Phoenix. Might be using Season Pyromancer to make some tokens for the Phoenix to mutate onto. My opponent does have three mana here. They're good to go. Let's try Season Pyromancer. Let's get rid of Damping Matrix. I don't want to get rid of this land. Have a new Season Pyromancer after. Let's get rid of the Season Pyromancer and just guarantee this land drop. It's a good guaranteed land drop. We'll go ahead and give ourselves a Chalice on one, which is good against Path now, especially since we have a Phoenix. We have a Dovin Vita that's going after a Chalice on one. That's clearing the way for Chandra. Good for us. Opponent plays a Castle. All right, let's... uh. Let's do that combat thing. <laughs> combat, let's go ahead and try the Phoenix to mutate onto an elemental. We're doing this post combat because I was trying to get them to maybe do something during combat. By doing it post here, we don't get four damage in. To me, that's okay. I was trying to get them to do maybe a snap path, maybe Something else, maybe an Aether Gust, who knows. All right, well, apparently, our Phoenix resolves here. They might even have just like Dovin Vitos, Negate style things, Forces of Negation here. Okay, so Snapcaster and they're gonna path. Pretty much the same result, except this time we probably don't lose Season Pyromancer or something else here. We'll take our land. We do lose the Phoenix for now, but we could find another Phoenix. It's always an option. I'm pretty okay with how everything's gone thus far. Hallowed Fountain, we do shock this in. Now we have Cryptic Command online. Let's go combat first, due to the Cryptic Command being an option for my opponent. Because we now have two Season Pyromancers in the yard, I'm really tempted to just use these instead of trying to play Chandra because a Snapcaster Dovin Veto looks really bad. Oh, five mana. Is this a big shark? Sharknado? It's a big shark? Well, it's a 3-3 it's a three, three shark. I guess it's not that big. <laughs> okay. 
get some of these season pyromancers coming back. Celestial Colonnade for our opponent does not attack us, trying to preserve their life total. Makes sense. One season pyromancer back here for us. It's a desperate ritual. Let's go ahead and attempt to resolve a Chandra here. I don't expect it to. We have five mana after this for the season pyromancer tokens. This is a counter draw from them. We'll pass on attacking here. I do have like a braids that could get rid of the shark. You have this colonnade to worry about. Now my opponent has a lot less on the whole, <clears throat> a lot less on the whole basic land. So a blood moon would be nice. The batter skull. Go ahead and get the Season Pyromancer tokens here. Batter Skull is going to be a problem for us. Well, it was going to be a problem. Okay. I think we pass the turn again, leaving ourselves in a braid. an opt. Maybe we can abrade the batter skull. Man. <laughs> I just look at a potential blood moon this time around. They had so many basics last time. I was like, well, it's not going to matter. Yes, it does. The anger of the gods. We're slowly making it less and less useful to go ahead and do this, this uh, removal that we have. Go and attack with the team. Opponent flashes in a batter skull. I'm going to go ahead and allow this to happen here and then anger and see if they don't like that. They gain a bit of life total here. We'll attempt an anger now. Okay. Maybe I can get them to counter that. They're going to want to try to return this to their hand. I need them to use the three mana to return here so I can abrade it or at least attempt to. Oh. Oh, five mana. We're going to draw with Sharknado. I'm going to go ahead and fire off the, the Batter Skull here. Does it resolve, or do you have a Force of Negation? We clear the Batter Skull. All right. Pretty happy with that so far. Woo. Now what? Um, I don't know. Bridge would be okay to have. Fetching and... Immediately, with the Flooded Strand, another island, plenty of basics. Sword of Feast and Famine. This is just as bad as the other Batter Skull. Opponent attacks us for five, makes us discard and untaps with everything. Now they can attack with the Celestial Colonnade pretty easily each turn. Top of the library is a... Ooh. Ooh. There's almost no reason to wait here. If we don't resolve this, we don't. But if my opponent has like Force and Dovin Veto and something else, maybe Path, Storm Breath resolving and attacking for four plus Monstrous next turn could be enough. Could be enough. We'll see. We get to attack. Protection from white feels good. In for four. Okay. Get the monstrous next turn and potentially kill them. Woo! Gonna make a token? Makes a token. Six plus four is ten. It's not dead. <laughs> Ops. Uh-oh. Are we panicking? Nah, nah. We're just using this because shark. Do they have to defend with shark, though? Booting up colonnade and attacking us. This makes all sense here. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't need the scavenger grounds. I could use this to get rid of the graveyards. Opponent attacks us with a bunch here. We discard, they untap, yada, yada, yada. They need a cryptic command. That's that's about all they, they have here. So we have seven mana. This is seven to monstrous. Clear the graveyard so nothing crazy happens to us. We play our Ramionaut Ruins down and attack for four. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. No. Aether Gust. No. <laughs> well, I'll use the Monstrous here. But we're at five. Unfortunate for us. Aethergust is a good out to Stormbreath Dragon as well. No path, no cryptic and stuff. Oh, we're using this. Oh. Is this really red? We have a phoenix, right? Whenever you mutate, create a red artifact token. Well, there you go. It's a red artifact token. <laughs> All right, well, we get to monstrous them for two, puts them to six. Obviously, I'll top this, but they've got a shark here. My opponent's killing us. Another close game here. An extra storm breath dragon wouldn't be bad. If we start seeing a lot of a blue white, playing those storm breath dragons wouldn't be a bad idea. Opponent attacks, though. Game over for us. We're one and two going into match number four. Let's even it up and let's get that three two. Let's make this a positive league. Let's go. We'll see you in the next match. Match number four here. One and two overall. Trying to make things happen here with a little bit of the Everquill Phoenixes. Now, Everquill Phoenix is here for more of a mid-range list. And we've run into an aggro. Eldrazi is a little more aggro, but in the mid-range category. And we ran into a tempo list, being that it was blue-white with things like Spellqueller and Snapcaster Mage. That is more of the control side of mid-range, but it is strictly a tempo list. So we haven't really run into the Jun that I was hoping for, maybe Abzan, maybe Red Greens. So let's see if we can find one of those, and let's see if we can beat them, because that's the idea. We get to play first. Let's go. We'll keep this hand. Got this Phoenix, but we have two Blood Moons. Thought sees proof. We'll lead with Gemstone here and pass back to our opponent. Let's go. Bobble. Uses Bobble. This could be Grix's Death Shadow. Steam Vents, Shocks in, Thought Scours. Mm hmm. There went a chalice. They got rid of our chalice seeing it with a bobble. Nifty, nifty, nifty. Well, we might be running Blood Moon out into a stubborn denial here. We'll see. They don't know about both of these. They take a look at the top of our library again. Maybe they have another Thought Scour. We have a Swamp. Kind of tempted to wait on the blood moon here because of a stubborn denial all right i may not wait now because they're gonna probably take one blood moon and i need to play the other one before they thought sees again maybe maybe they're worried about season parliament they say rip me <laughs> we have a nice evasive creature here against the death shadow list and a good reason that we would say mid-range and phoenix go hand in hand they end up taking the Season Pyromancer, which is an interesting take here. Bobble Trigger. We have another Season Pyromancer. It's interesting they took Season Pyromancer and then I top deck into a Season Pyromancer. I'm going to risk it and play Blood Moon here into the Stubborn Denial, even though my opponent said rip me. <laughs> Maybe it was a trick. We're looking okay, though. Plays a Gurmag Angler. Nice fish. 
Okay, let's go ahead and play a Season Pyromancer, getting rid of Blood Moon and Gemstone here. Play our Mountain and pass the turn. We now have a Phoenix, which we could put on, say, Season Pyromancer and fly over. We can get the Rabble Master down. We got a lot of good things going for us. We're going to actually take the five here, I think, for this turn. And we'll probably just set ourselves up for a really good turn next turn here. So let's go ahead and do land. Let's go ahead and Rabble Master here. Let's attack with just Rabble Master. Plan to block with Elemental. Ooh, Dismember. Okay. Well, we'll hold everything back now because I do want to potentially chump block. I may let it go through one more time with this Phoenix. I could also just block with the Season Pyromancer. This seems reasonable. Just make a bunch of tokens. Make tokens for forever. Play a Death Shadow. <laughs> Season Pyromancer again with a Phoenix in hand. I mean, what? We need to find a bridge. It's probably the better thing to be finding than trying to kill them with a Phoenix here. All right, I've convinced myself that let's go ahead and do this. Let's make a bunch of tokens here and let's try to find that. Let's try to find that bridge. We find an abraid, which actually isn't a bad thing to use to kill Death Shadow here, so I have one creature to deal with. And if we find nothing here on our next draw, we can always use Valakut Awakening. Looks like my opponent's going to dismember something. We do not kill the Death Shadow. The dismember is good to have seen. Glad we didn't go for Phoenix. At this point, my opponent easily could probably beat us now with just a team or battle rage. After all, that is the most common way I die to these lists. We're going to block block here. Needing bridge, most definitely. Top of the library is a land. Let's do a Valakut Awakening here. I know that doesn't mean I get the Season Pyromancers, but I draw a little bit extra. We have a Chalice. like the idea of a Chalice. I guess we can put a Chalice on one so they don't play another Death Shadow. Team or Battle Rage is definitely a threat for us. Staying back to defend. Oh boy. Opponent goes to combat here. We're going to be taking five. We'll block. Down to ten. Bridge? Find that bridge. Come on. Guess we're going to use Season Pyromancer tokens and hope to never find them with the team or battle rage. <laughs> oh, help us. <clears throat> We have three sets of these Season Pyromancers. I'm just going to play it now. They know this is what we're going to be doing, obviously. Fatal Push is defended here with a Chalice, so that's good for us. They can't remove these and, and hit us. I'm going to block, block. If I top deck a land, I could play Chandra Uptick and get a Season Pyromancer. So that's a reason to do it this way. If I get a bridge, I can Chandra Uptick bridge. We do hit the land. So we play Chandra here. We use Chandra's mana to get Season Pyromancer tokens. We're fighting. We're fighting. We're trying to get there. More blockers. Now what? <laughs> I guess a Chalice on two wouldn't be the worst. Again, then Season Pyromancer again. They play a land here. They attack me. And they attack, oh, oh, they're attacking Chandra. And Chandra, I will block block here. Using Chandra as an extra draw here to try to find bridge. We have seven mana, so a Karn down tick plus Chandra up tick would give us Karn plus bridge. It's a rabble master. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Let's do Season Pyromancer tokens. 
plus Rabble Master. Tokens block, Rabble Master plus its token blocks next turn. We're just trying to create a bunch of blockers here for the next few turns. Trying to use Chandra to find as many cards. We're not worried about We're not worried about digging with Chandra yet. We just want to maximize the number of land or number of cards we do see. Again, we're we're very afraid of a team or battle rage. So block Rabble Master block token. Then we have two more blockers, so we get more digs with Chandra here. They attack with just this. If they have a teamer battle rage, they could kill us. So if I do this, this prevents a teamer battle rage from killing us. Because that would be 12. We would block enough. I think I can do it this way, actually. 12, block 3. Yeah, we'll do it this way. And then I have Chump Jump. Get an extra look with Chandra here. Come on, Bridge, where are you at? The braid. Looking for Bridge. <laughs> That's not a Bridge. We'll pass turn. <laughs> running out of options here. <laughs> Chandra's at seven, and a braid could kill the Death Shadow. Could also kill them. My opponent is at eight. Attacks with the one, attacks with here. I'm going to chump chump. One time, miss the team or battle rage. Come on. <laughs> we tried. They did find the team or battle rage, and the team or battle rage would have killed us last time if we didn't block how we did. They end up double striking here with the death shadow and kill us. Our emblem would have killed them, but our top deck was ritual plus uptick was blood moon. We're not finding that bridge. All right. Well then, let's hazard it. Let's magus. This is a good example where Everquill Phoenix might be reasonable. Let's get rid of two slag storms. Let's run it like that. My opponent's letting me know they had the team or battle rage for the last five turns. <laughs> they always have it. If we put the chalice on two, we stop the team or battle rage. But then we die to things like Fatal Push and Lightning Bolts removing our creatures instead of getting the chump block with them. I think our line was fine. We saw probably the most amount of cards we could have seen. Let's play first. Let's keep. I like this hand. <laughs> I like a Chalice on one. Thought Seize Proof Hand. Feels good. We'll start with this Valakut Awakening. Put this into play tapped and pass the turn. Let's go. Mishra's Bobble. Be funny to try to play around a Stubborn Denial with, say, a Desperate Ritual. Looks like my opponent's going to do Scalding Tarn, maybe Thought sees us immediately here. Nope, Island. Serum Visions. Okay. They went and got a Basic here as well. I'm tempted to just go ahead and slap down a Chalice on one. wonder what they saw on the top. Blood Moon? It's all a Rabble Master. All right. Let's go ahead and Chalice as our first play here, because I think this is just better than playing Rabble Master right now. And then we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. Opponent cycles a Street Wraith in response. We have a Chalice on two that I could play as well. Not sure if that's better or not. Shock in here. Interesting. Okay. Well, now I'm kind of just tempted to go ahead and try to get the Chalice on two. I know that our Desperate Ritual becomes offline by doing this. But putting this on two, 
My opponent's going to eventually get a Gurmag Angler, I'm sure. Snapcaster Mage. All right. Snapcaster Mage, 2-1. Not too concerned about that. They do know about our one Rabble Master. Gurmag Angler is the last thing I'm worried about right now. I am a little bit worried about a K Command. Unlocking maybe the Chalice on one. And that is available to them now with the Polluted Delta. They don't go get red, though. No red. So we're not interested in red because probably it's only team or battle rage. The rest of the list is probably blue and black. Attack for two, pass turn. Sounds good to me. We are looking for that bridge at some point. Season Pyromancer lets me dig for the bridge. I like this. I like a Season Pyromancer over a Rabble Master right now, because by pitching a Rabble Master, that makes them think that I'm clear of that. Finding a Chandra plus Rabble Master, not bad, not bad. Things are coming together. Still looking for that bridge though. We haven't seen it for a while. We do have it in there somewhere. So there's a chump block on the Gurmag Angler here. I'll probably block with the Season Pyromancer with the idea that I can use that for tokens in the future. All right, we had a land. I think this is a pretty easy Chandra uptick Rabble Master turn. I think I'm okay to also give them 13 life here with this Rabble Master. Just because this chalice is on one. Oh, do we have something? Snapcaster doesn't work here because of chalice on two. Countered. Thought Scours. They're refueling their graveyard here for a future Gurmag Angler. We'll attack with the Goblin here. My opponent will maybe block with Snapcaster, but they might also be happy to go to 13. Here we go again. Chandra's got to dig for answers. This time, though, we can chump block a lot easier. Snapcaster does block. You have a fish. Snapcaster blocking allows my opponent to potentially get another fish here. What are we going to do? What is it? Four in the yard, three here. That's seven. That's fish material. Plague engineer. We can name either goblin or elemental. We can use Chandra to kill this if we'd like to. This is a pretty good card. They decide Elemental here. They're going to attack five at probably Chandra. And we will block. We want more looks at this. Top of the library is a Blood Moon. I don't think I care for this. I can either kill here and create Season Pyromancer tokens to chump block, giving me more draws here. Maybe I do that. I don't think I'm going to get quite up far enough here. Let's kill a Plague Engineer, plan for Season Pyromancer tokens. Let's just pass the turn. My opponent doesn't have red. They can also not team or battle rage here. I'm not too worried about most things. I'd be worried about a future a future Plague Engineer, naming Elemental, and then they get to go in with the Gurmag Angler. But there's, can't play against, can't play through everything. Gotta give ourselves the most looks probably with this Chandra. Also holding Blood Moon right now could turn into a Season Pyromancer token. Attacks for five at Chandra here. We're just gonna chump block. Okay. I also don't want to unlock K Command right now. Opponent follows this up with what appears to be a three drop, which is going to be just another Gurmag Angler here. Okay. They leave their Plague Engineer here, which makes me think they have a K Command eventually. Top of the library is another Blood Moon. Let's go ahead and see what else we can draw. We have a Chalice. I can't put a Chalice on three. I could put another one on two. If 
I wanted to. I'm going to say... I'm going to go ahead and put this on two. I'm going to put it on two because a K command getting rid of the two and then a team or battle rage just seems really bad for us. So Chandra should die here. They'll take two Gurmag Anglers and attack the Chandra. We're just digging for that bridge if we can find it. Karn, down tick with Karn would be nice at this point. Keeping them at 14 is okay in case the K command removes the Chalice. Five at Chandra plus... Five at Chandra. Chandra is dead. Okay. Now what? <laughs> what do you got? Death Shadow? Countered. We're gonna fill that graveyard because we've got another Gurmag Angler. Death Shadow? Countered. Bridge. Calling for bridge all night. There we go. Bridge found. Okay. We'll go ahead and pass the turn. I'm gonna leave the elemental back in case they have a way to remove the bridge. I'd like to be able to then jump block still. My opponent attempts a stubborn denial. This is obviously fueling for future Gurmag anglers. All right, Death Shadow. What's next? <laughs> really afraid to play these blood moons. I don't want to unlock that K command. And there you have it. We get there. Nice. Plenty of chalices there. <laughs> Plenty of them. Let's send it back. <sighs> one and one. They get to play first. Thought Seize is a thing they can do. Stubborn Denials. Definitely going to have those abrades, K commands, or however they're going to deal with our chalices. We'll want a fast bridge, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see if we can find one faster. Let's go. Game three. The fast rabble master. Let's keep. Let's get rid of Karn here and let's go double down on fast rabble masters here and see if we can close the game rapidly. The best thing to have in the deck if you're going for this type of strategy would be an Eidolon, but maybe we'll curve out into one of these Phoenixes. Let's make it happen. Mishra's Bobble here. This also stops or gets around a Stubborn Denial somewhat. Somewhat. We can't fully get around a Stubborn Denial anymore. Scalding Tarn for our opponent here. A basic island's really good to see. They're afraid of a Blood Moon. Uses a Street Wraith here as well. Bobble trigger. I don't know what they saw on the top. They saw in a braid. All right. Desperate ritual, rabble master, and swing for the fences. Let's get our aggro on. <laughs> Let's bash them in. So in for a point. I assume this connects. Awesome. All right. What else do you have, opponent? Got to be a fetch land, right? Basic Swamp. That's good to see, because if they have Fatal Push, they can't get rid of Rabble Master. They have a Feed the Swarm as their removal spell. All right. It's pretty good. Stops Ley Line and stuff like that, too. We will lead with another Rabble Master here and attack for two. We do have an Abrade that could get rid of a Death Shadow if they play a Death Shadow. If they play a Gurmag Angler, we're in a little bit of trouble here because they'll be able to, one, protect with Stubborn Denial, but two, it's also just a little too big for our, our Abrade. Hit for two, put them to 11, 11 to 20. Life totals don't totally matter here, and they never have against Death Shadow. Let's see that fetch land. There's the fetch land. Now they can play Death Shadow pretty safely here. Fetch, Shock, Death Shadow. Let's see if they get a Blood Crypt this time around. They do. Does not shock it in, though. This is interesting. Aether Gusts. Huh. 
Huh. We have two sets of Death Shadows here. I wonder if they remember our braid, if they saw it with Bobble. I don't think they did. Do I just top this, but go to second main here? One, two, three, four, five. If they fetch Shock there, they would have been able to play Gurmag Angler with Stubborn Denial up. Hmm. Attacking for three seems reasonable. If I attack for three next turn, they go to seven. They play two Death Shadows and have Stubborn Denial up. I then attack. Rabble Master's blocked. Token's blocked. But three more gets through. Puts them to four. I'm going to go with the top here. The other thing I could do is take a turn here to just scavenger grounds. That way they can't play a Gurmag Angler. They play Gurmag Angler and a Death Shadow. So we have to guess if they have Fish or Death Shadow here. Them fetching and shocking makes me think they potentially would have. But they don't. They play it in tapped. When they play it in tapped here, they had the ability to get a Death uh, Gurmag Angler because they would have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They've decided to go shields down, but they didn't play a Gurmag Angler. They opted to Aether Gust. By attacking here, my braid is useless to Death Shadows going forward. I think we still need to go ahead and just play here. And we'll just trust the top of the library. We'll have something that can get around. Maybe this is Phoenix's chance to show up and win the game. After all, a Phoenix on Rabble Master with no removal would be lights out. Keep the ability under the Rabble Master. Have a 4 4 evasive flyer, and then we'd have four tokens as well. That would be eight damage coming through. Come on, Phoenix. One time. A Hazard wouldn't be a bad draw here. Chandra is probably not going to be as important because of the potential stubborn denial that my opponent may be holding up. Karn's probably not getting us there. Looks like our opponent has lost the connection, but they are now just rejoining, so should be really quick to get them back. Down to seven, my opponent goes here. All right. Did we make the right call? Did we not want to get rid of the graveyard here for a fish? If it is only a fish, then maybe the abrade will be able to kill it, depending on if they tap out or not of the island here. Blocking, I assume they block Rabble Master and they would take four. We need two blockers for my opponent probably to have a chance here. If they have only one blocker, we're looking pretty good because we'll get most of the goblin tokens in. Dismember is not necessarily an out for them at this present time, but it could be an option for them as well. Let's see what they've got. And we get there. We get there. Enough aggression here with double Rabble Master taking it down. Top is a Karn, followed by a Season Pyromancer, and another Season Pyromancer coming up. 2-2. Two, two. All right. Take down the two mid-range stylists, and the other tempo and aggro list we falter with. Hmm. I did say this was a mid-range slayer, after all. And you can argue with me if Death Shadow or Eldrazi is mid-range. I would argue they're close. Match five, coming up next. Queuing up here for match number five, our final match. We took a snack break, re-energized. It's good to take snack breaks. If you're in a big event, don't forget to bring your snacks. Eat lunch, eat dinner, eat breakfast. That way you can stay focused. So hopefully in match five, we'll stay focused. 
Let's find our opponent. We've completely forgotten about matches one through four. We're happy to be playing Magic. Did we lose? Did we win? We're 2-2. Two, two. Match five. Let's go. And opponents found. Let's do it. What are we playing? Ah, yes. Red Prison with Phoenix. We got it all here. We're going to keep this. We have a three lander. We have a bridge or blood moon on curve. And we've got Phoenix plus Karn. This is what we want to be doing. Misty Rainforest for our opponent. Hopefully they're not a tempo list. We'll find out. We'll play this tap land in so that if we get any acceleration, we're good. And if we don't find another land, we're also pretty good here to get our four drops. Hallowed Fountain here, fetching. Snow Covered Island, we have another blue white opponent. Stoneforge Mystic here. Please, acceleration, do need it now. We have six of them. There's a Batter Skull. Ho oh, ho ho. On time. Desperate Ritual, Blood Moon. Don't have Force Negation. Yes. Ha ha ha. All right, step one complete. Stoneforge shut down briefly here. And briefly, I mean for exactly no turns. Snow Covered Plains for my opponent. Planning to more than likely get down the Batter Skull. We will attempt a bridge here, see if my opponent has a counter spell. <clears throat> and if they don't... Will it be looking decent? I could see a Batter Skull being played and then Teferi bounce this. This will be the second time we've run into the tempo list. Batter Skull is played off of Stoneforge Mystic. Please do not play Teferi. Give me one more turn. Need to play Karn. Need Spyglass. Don't do it, opponent. By the way, they're Avacyn. I love this avatar. Maybe we should change it, see if anyone notices on stream. No, oh, white, red. Don't tap that island. Okay, another Stoneforge Mystic. Sword of Feast and the Famines. Hooks it up to Germ, and Germ sits there and twiddles its thumbs. It's a 6-6. Six, six. All right, we do not have... Whoop. We do not have... a Pithy Needle. Let's go ahead and play a Karn, though. Let's go ahead and get... a Spyglass. Pass the turn. Now my opponent can attack me with the Stoneforge Mystic. Keep in mind that they cannot bounce these around. If they do have Teferi, though, they could bounce the bridge. We are vulnerable for a turn here. We could lose our Karn and things could get really questionable. My opponent plays a Glacial Fortress down though. We will try to play Spyglass first. If this is countered, I may down tick to go get another bridge to defend us against a Teferi. Let's see what's gonna happen here. Fingers crossed. Don't get me opponent. Don't do it. I'd love to take down this blue-white opponent. It would be good to redeem ourselves here. Opponents considering their options here. Glacial Fortress was played for the turn. They're not slamming to fairy, so I feel good here. They're saying their internet's bad. We'll just say all good. Many people have had issues with internet this past week. Floats white. There's white, blue, red. Oh! No! Oh. Teferi's played here. Teferi bounces bridge, and Germ's gonna get to attack us. They do if they attack Karn, not untap, so that's something to be aware of. They gotta choose wisely what they do here. They attack Karn. All right. So Karn dies here. I have Spyglass and Bridge, which feel like okay things to be playing with. We have a bunch of rituals here. Let's go ahead and start. Let's go ahead and start with a ritual here. Ritual, ritual, just make sure we have tons of mana here. We'll spyglass first to check the hand. We'll name Teferi. We have a spell snare, shark, shark, and opt. Sweet. Teferi. 
time traveler. Okay. We then have bridge here and we will pass. Cool. All right. So we have Teferi taken care of. We do have the bridge locking down my opponent. They can cycle shark. They can cycle opt. They got to basically be looking for a way to bounce bridge, probably with multiple islands and a cryptic. So we're going to need to work our way to that. My opponent finds an island here after topping with opt. They can attack for one. They do 19 to 24. Land and we'll slap down this Phoenix. There is an argument for holding the land there, but I prefer to hold spells more than anything. <laughs> Little read on the Phoenix. Doesn't do much here. It's just a 4 4. Nothing crazy, nothing to mutate onto. Mutating onto a Rabble Master would be hilarious. You do have Bridge, though, needing it because of Germ. Opponent has another Opt here. Puts the card on top. We're hoping for no more islands here. They liked whatever it was, and it was an island. Big Teferi? Just a big shark here. Or casts, sorry, cast the Shark Typhoon. We have Shark Typhoon and Spell Snare here. Let's go ahead and use our Season Pyromancer, trying to find some answers to everything happening here. We have a new Karn, which looks great for us. Let's play new Karn here. And the Spell Snare stops a Liquid Metal coating, which is frustrating. We might want to go get a Walking Blissa. I think this turn, I'm actually going to go ahead and up on, say, the sword here. And then we'll worry about maybe upping on Batterskull the following turn. I need a way to get Liquid Metal into play through this Spell Snare. So we'll be looking for a turn where we have Chalice. When it plays a land, Shark, Spell Snare, and an Unknown card. We can also probably next turn worry about getting a second bridge, which is probably a safe bet versus just having the single bridge. Gotta, gotta lock them all the way out. All right, a slag storm here. I don't actually want to play this. Let's go ahead and down tick here. And let's... I really wouldn't mind getting this walking ballista. Let's get another bridge, though. Let's get another bridge. Let's play the bridge down. Oh, we have something. Oh, we have we have something. We're just gonna cycle shark. This is five mana using all their blue. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we're gonna make a big shark. <laughs> Big shark made. Okay. Just drawing cards here. I'm going to hold the slag storm for the time being. I don't want to really lose my season pyromancer. I could always uptick on this sword here and use the slag storm more efficiently. If I get another slag storm, maybe it's worth it because we have a shark here. Opponent plays a land, spell snare, two unknowns. Okay. Combat. Skips through that. Another land. Let's go ahead and up on the batter skull here, and we'll play our land down and pass the turn. All right, so batter skull is a 5 5 at the moment. Not too concerned about that. We're doing something here. Snap, and then maybe an opt here. They're digging. They're digging, and it's scaring me. Makes a shark. Definitely going to consider this slag storm this coming turn. It does kill enough things, and then they won't have this batter skull floating around either. 
It won't kill our Phoenix either, giving us a blocker on the shark. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. They have four islands now, plenty of islands to use for Cryptic Command. Really worried about Spell Snare, but then also a follow-up counter at this point. Uh-oh. Jace? This looks like Jace the Mind Sculptor. <clears throat> Four mana. Yep, Jace. Jace! Okay, still have Spell Snare available to them. This is a 4-4. Four, four. Not very good for us with the Slag Storm. But it brainstorms. To me, there's probably a case to going up here with the Jace. The reason to go up with the Jace is you're trying to make it so that you can <clears throat> win the game through Jace Ultimate. I don't have another way to really deal with the Jace, except for Liquid Metal Coating. So we're kind of hurting there. There's a Valakut Awakening. We actually may prefer that over the Slag Storm. At this point, if my opponent unlocks us at any any capacity, they probably win. Let's go ahead and try this Valakut Dicka draw two. Shouldn't harm us too much here. We could have even put a card into hand and then use Karn, but I'm trying to bait this spell snare out at some point. Hmm. <clears throat> Go ahead and season Pyromancer now, drawing cards, getting rid of a Phoenix. We find another bridge and a Rabble Master. Let's let's use Karn down to here to get a Walking Blista and put Walking Blista on one to see if that baits out the Spell Snare. Again, we're trying to get to that liquid metal coating. Ah, there we go. All right, spell snare is out of hand. Is that good? I don't know. <laughs> is that good? Who knows? We can go get that later. We have an opt after the shark type or after the spell snare, making another shark here. They put the card on top of their library and they keep it and draw it. Okay, now what? White mana. Path that exiles our Phoenix. Okay, I will get a land. That makes me a little nervous. <laughs> now we don't have a flyer. We have the potential of a third bridge, which feels good. Brainstorming with Jace once more. They have to have a bunch of counters now. They're gonna just try to synchronize countering and bouncing and other things like that. Oh, they can attack here. Oh, I didn't see this. All right, Karn down. I think we'll be okay though. One, two, three. Let's play bridge. Rabble Master and then another Rabble Master. All the ra all the Rabble Masters. We're going wide on our opponent. They do not counter either of these. We'll have tokens generated, pass the turn. Okay, now we're in a bit of a weird spot where we have three bridges here. We can attack with goblin tokens at any point. My opponent has Teferi and a Jace here. We need to go wide enough that we end up getting around this. My opponent can put a batter skull onto something now because they have free mana. At any point, my opponent can unlock their mana as well because we only have one Blood Moon, but they're not going to be attacking me due to these. My opponent finally decides going up here with Jace is the right play. Okay. And they put the card on top of the library, plays a land, and looks like they're gonna pass it back to us. Top of the library is a slag storm. We will do three damage to each player and pass the turn generating tokens.
Go ahead, opponent. This one may come down to time. We're still on game number one here. And although they have a Jace, we'll probably go wide enough here with Rabble Masters to be okay. They do path one of the Rabble Masters. Okay. I need them to bottom with Jace. <clears throat> they must feel comfortable with however many counters they do have. Probably has like a cryptic command or something. They go up here again with Jace, taking a look at the top of our library and puts it on the bottom. Did not like the card. Maybe it was another Rabble Master. Maybe it was a Karn. Maybe it was a Chandra. Now we're paying a lot to attach things with Batter Skull. That's what I would assume. Attaches it to make a 10-10 shark. Love it. Leaves mana available for Cryptic Command, though. Top of the lottery was just a mountain. We'll pass, making one token now with Rabble Master. We do die in the air at this point. We have a 10-10, 4-4, and 5-1-1s. Opponent has not moved to bounce bridges at all yet. We have five, six, seven, eight, nine creatures to get around. We currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven with the next Rabble Master. They put the card on the bottom again. Top of the library is an unknown. It happens to be a land. We'll pass the turn. What was worse, Teferi or Jace? Tough to say. Looks at the top again, puts the card on the bottom. They've put the last three cards on the bottom. Interesting to have these. Stoneforge Mystic here. Things are starting to slow down. Our tokens are blinking. My opponent's got a new Sword of Fire and Ice. Plays the Sword of Fire and Ice. Attaches it as well, I assume. Maybe they'll attach this. Maybe they'll attach this one. But it chooses to what appears to be leave two, two or so things open. We get a Chandra. We will attempt a Chandra here. Interesting card. We now have a counter. Counter and draw. We'll pass back. <clears throat> this Jace has to go to 12. We don't have enough creatures to get around the Jace. I still have one out here, which is Karn, Down Tick, and Liquid Metal Coating if my opponent has no counter spells. We're going up to 13 here with Jace. So we'll play that one out. It's worth a, a shot here. We have one Karn left in the list. <laughs> Let's put a, a chalice on four. Why not? And all on you, opponent. We have a snapcaster. We're going to snap cryptic here. Seeing if we could get any more information out. The answer is no. So when we play the season pyromancer, we end up losing the Karn. But if we didn't play the Season Pyromancer, we still lose the Karn to the Sharks. Just something that is relevant here. Okay. So we're going to be going into game number two here. Opponent's got 12 minutes on their clock. We have 20 on ours. We need to be more aggressive. I don't mind them seeing pretty much everything we're doing here. They should have a good idea of what we're doing. They won't know what we're bringing in, which will be Hazard, Storm Breath, stuff like that. All right. Let's go to sideboard. So Storm Breath, Hazard, Magus, probably all worth coming in. And I think we've kind of screwed this up a few times playing lately. I think I'm going to go ahead and just take the bridges out and worry about getting a bridge off of Karn and just try to attack them with all of our creatures. We don't have a very aggressive sideboard, and this is because we're trying to kill mid-range rather than these control tempo-y strategies.
But if we're seeing that in aggro, then we're going to need a more pivot style of red prism. Let's go. We got to win some here. Stormbreath's feeling very strong lately. Might have to run some Cavern of Souls and some Dragons again. It's been a while, but we could do that again. Everquill Phoenix not doing exactly what we wanted here <clears throat> in this league. After all, our opponents have all had aggro or path strategies. All right, let's play first. Let's go ahead and keep this. <clears throat> we have a Rabble Master, not accelerated once again. We weren't planning to accelerate as often with this list just because of that mid-range desire. That's okay though. Maybe we can get this Rabble Master down and start hitting him. Maybe a Phoenix, maybe a Season Pyromancer. Punk's got a little bit of every color here. Plays a Stoneforge Mystic as their first play. Good for them. It's a Batter Skull. We now have the ability to play a Phoenix or a Karn, or if we want to play Season Pyromancer or Rabble Master. Hmm. It's tough to say here. I think I actually want to go ahead and do a Season Pyromancer, getting rid of. Probably Phoenix and a Rabble Master holding on to the extra season Pyromancer. We get our tap land, unfortunately. <clears throat> Should be okay though. There's a field of ruin from our opponent. They're gonna wait to put Batter Skull into play. I think we go ahead and, and attempt. I think I like the idea of attempting a Karn the Great Creator here. See if they want to counter this. They do with a Spell Queller. Alright, so we don't find ourselves up against a Batter Skull just yet, but there is a Spell Queller. This is the second time we've run into this tempo list. And we're very not equipped for it. I think we'll we'll change this up for the night stream tonight. Definitely struggling with this strategy. Ooh, ooh, okay. All right, we've brought the phoenix to have the phoenix do the phoenix things. Let's mutate. Let's get this on an elemental. Let's go over, so it's a 4-4 flyer. We do get the sacrifice option here. My opponent's playing path, so maybe it will or maybe it won't do anything for us. A lot of this tempo though, we'll have some conversations in the conclusion about tempo. We've seen this quite a bit today and I'm not surprised. We'll see. All right, we get to attack. What's cool is this kind of gets haste, sort of, in its own way. Because my opponent, or my elemental was already here. My opponent's going to play Batter Skull, though. So Batter Skull resolves here. <clears throat> Spell Queller with the Batter Skull is a pretty good and lethal combination, that's for sure. I can fight back a little bit by attacking with a, a Phoenix. Opponent's got a Field of the Rune, which they can use to unlock their mana base as well. 
I expect a 4-4 germ to hit us. We will take all four damage here. I could even throw spell queller. We'll take all six now. Just kidding. Yes. Yes. All right. We're down to 14. My opponent goes back up to 20. Opponent's got all kinds of mana here. Our best bet is probably Season Pyromancer if we miss. Our best draws are Hazret, Chandra, Karn, and Stormbreath at this point. So Rabble Master doesn't quite do it. Let's go ahead and play Season Pyromancer digging deeper here. My opponent will be able to get Cryptic Command going next turn. Get rid of these two cards. All right, let's go ahead and go to combat here. Hit for four in the air, keeping things a little bit close. Probably worth trying to put a chalice on one for Optim Path. Here comes the path. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> We'll go ahead and slap down this Chalice on one and pass the turn. We're going to probably need to start chum blocking this germ just to keep our life total high enough. Chalice on one, my opponent's thinking about this path, reconsidering, thinking about the path, and does path. Now we don't have a blocker for the Spell Queller. That's okay, though. We're going to use Field of Ruin. I would expect to go get their last blue source here. Making our Blood Moon not very good. And they'll opt here as well. At this point, we need to lock out the game and try to win from there. So Chump Blocks will be necessary. I'll probably Chump Block with a Seasoned Pyromancer first, in case they have something like a Celestial Purge. Rather see the Seasoned Pyromancer into the bin here, in the graveyard, rather than getting exiled. New Stoneforge. Sword of Fire and Ice. My opponent's going to easily attack for two. Probably not this because I could really block it out. The Sword of Fire and Ice is going to make it so... so that they can protect something. I guess I'm going to go ahead and just block this out here. I see no reason not to. Preserves our life total. Makes Batter Skull over here. Yeah, that's reasonable. Top deck's a land. We'll just pass the turn here with Season Pyromancers. This coming turn, my opponent's going to put a Sword of Fire Ice in and put the Spell Queller. The Spell Queller will hit us for four, five, six with the two extra damage. So we'll need a bridge here. Need a bridge and a bridge only to win. Maybe a Karn because I should have enough mana. Five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We don't have enough. We need bridge and bridge only. The so four, five, we cannot hit it with anything because we are red. And a braid could get rid of the sword of fire and ice. So running a braids would work too. And we had a land. Well, there you have it. Opponent takes us down. Blue white tempo takes us down twice. We do beat the two mid range lists that are in the entire league, which is what we want to do. We'll have some thoughts in the conclusion about the Phoenix and how things lined up for us. We'll see you there. Two three. Two three. Two three overall with Red Prison gearing up to kill mid-range, finding it twice and beating it both times. So objectively, we've actually succeeded. Now, before anybody tells me that that tempo list is mid-range, you're completely wrong. It's a tempo list. It's using control. It's using Teferis, it's using Spell Quellers, it's using Stoneforge Mystic to glue it to a bit of a mid-range list, but it's most definitely Tempo. We also saw what I recall as Burn, which is more aggro. So we achieved our goal, but at what cost? Well, we ended up losing the League 2-3 overall and not really succeeding. Now, if we expect this Tempo list to be showing up a little bit more often, things like the Everquill Phoenix will definitely not be what you want. This is great against Jund or removal heavy decks, Rock, Rakdos, things like that, just because it is a persistent threat for a few turns and is just difficult to get rid of. 
against the Celestial Purge and Path lists, Everquill Phoenix, although turning into a nice four mana ramp spell in some cases because of Path is not exactly what we want to be doing. We've seen benefits to Blood Moon and Snaring Bridge and Chalice happening at the right time, and so that's been decent. I think we're pretty okay with the list. I could see myself needing more Chandras. I can see myself needing a little bit more of an aggro plan out of the sideboard as well. With this kind of build, we're more or less mid-range and kind of like muddling up a little bit of what we're doing here in terms of playing a list that can be one option or another. And I think by muddling it up there, we're kind of losing what Red Prison can do here. And so back to the drawing board, let's go back to some original content here with Rabble Masters, maybe Eidolons as well. And let's get a little bit more aggressive when we need to. That tempo list and any blue-white control lists that we may run into will require that aggro. It was fun though, playing the Phoenix. Definitely see a place where it would be nice. Maybe it's just mom dog all the way with Hazret the Fervent. That's probably where we'll be. That's it. Thanks for watching. Consider liking, subscribing, all that cool YouTube stuff. Catch us live on Twitch. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And until next time, we'll see you in the next matches. Take care, everyone.